Hello Internet and happy holidays to all of you out there in the YouTube land. Um, I have to say that my watchers, commenters um, here on the channel have been a pretty big bright spot and has given me a lot of like encouragement and positive vibes in what would otherwise be a pretty depressing year right? <laughs> so I wanted to do an extra video just as a thank you to all of you guys out there who have been uh, brightening my day um, every time you send something to my inbox. Um, that being said, I know a lot of people were requesting a wrapping video because paper makes some really good crinkle noises and it just couldn't happen. I'm actually still making some of my Christmas gifts. So the next most requested video is a cooking video. <laughs> now I'll admit that doing a cooking video actually makes me nervous. Um, I sound all fancy when I unbag my groceries, but overall I cook very simple meals. Um, I'm not trained. I didn't go to culinary school. Um, and I didn't even, <laughs> my mom is not a great cook. So I didn't learn a lot from her, but I do love cooking shows. Uh, like Elton Brown's, uh, Good Eats is probably my all time favorite, right? Which is where I get a little bit of that food science knowledge, but I just want to kind of throw it out there that I am not <laughs> a really fancy cook. I just tend to enjoy a few of the finer things. That being said, let's go ahead and jump into what we're making today. You have seen me in my grocery videos uh, bring home bags upon bags of frozen vegetables. And the main thing I do with them is um, a stir fry. Now I put the air quotes up there because it's not usually a typically Asian tasting dish. In fact, um, one of the reasons why I can get away with cooking it almost every week, occasionally two times a week, <laughs> um, is that it's kind of like a really good base and you can change the flavor so easily. You know, if you're feeling kind of spicy, you can throw some spice in there. Um, curry powder. Um, I have millions and millions of spices and we'll talk a little bit about how to choose the flavorings as we go along. Um, but for today's demonstration, if you will, I'm going to just do kind of the, the base recipe, you know, like the, 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 the bare bones parts of it. Um, and you can kind of think of it like a sugar cookie, right? You could throw chocolate chips into a sugar cookie. You could ice it, put in some cinnamon and some nutmeg. It's a really good like base flavor, you know, vanilla ice cream would be another example, right? So this is our savory vanilla ice cream <laughs> in a manner of speaking. Anyways, so the base ingredients are really simple. We've got our big old bag of frozen vegetables. Um, and today's particular mix is broccoli stir fry. I use lots and lots of different types of mixes, right? Depending on which sort of flavor profile I'm gonna use later on, right? We have bacon. Um, I will not use all of this. I just tend to pre-chop it all at once when I need to use it um, and then my life is so much easier later on so we'll probably use about half of that today um, you don't really need to use quite that much but as you'll see next my chicken is a little on the small side so to help kind of boost the protein content I'm gonna add a little bit of extra bacon but I'd say generally hmm, I usually use about three to four pieces. So here's our chicken. Um, typically I use one whole chicken breast, one large chicken breast. Um, 
Today we just have two little uh, tenderloin cuts. I think that's what that call it. I think that's what they call it. Um, you know, just the little baby ones because I am an equal opportunity um, meat buyer, so to speak. So whatever's on sale is ten <laughs> tends to be what I pick up, right? <laughs> and finally, for the um, base flavorant, I have some garlic here and some good old-fashioned salt. Now, if you're going to use spices, you may cut out the salt here um, just because a lot of spice mixes have salt in it, but you'll kind of have to do that to taste. Uh, this is not like a precisely measured recipe. I just throw things in there until it works. <laughs> One of the things I really like about this dish is that it's just not fussy. Um, like. I didn't have to preheat my pan to a specific temperature. Um, I've just turned on the heat now to uh, medium. Um, and we might crank that up to medium, like a notch past medium a little later on. But um, as we're rendering out the bacon fat, ooh, that might be a lot of bacon. Yeah, what the heck. <laughs> um, kind of slow and steady wins the race. Uh, this is a thick cut bacon. I tend to prefer the pepper bacon because uh, it already has a little bit more flavor into it. But you could use, I wouldn't use any of the sweet ones like, um, you know, honey bacon, uh, maple bacon. That might throw it off. So um, pepper or just plain, either one works. But you do want sort of the thick cut bacon here. And you want that for two reasons. One, this uh, whole dish is going to be in the heat, like high heat for a bit. And thin bacon is just going to crumble and become sort of a dried out, crunchy, almost burnt mess um, because it just doesn't have enough surface area to hold on to some of its own moisture. Um, whereas the thick cut bacon will turn into those delicious bacon crumbles that uh, make this dish so worthwhile. Now, of course, if you had started with a hot pan, it probably, you know, the cooking part will go a little faster. There's nothing wrong with starting um, with a hot pan. Um, and in fact, if my bacon hadn't been pre-cut, I would have turned this on as I chopped it up. Um, and then it'll have a little bit of heat already, but we're just gonna let that go and while it is um, doing its thing we'll go ahead and cut up our other ingredients here starting with our little baby chickens <laughs> and like I said um, I do typically use a bigger uh, portion of chicken meat um, basically you know a whole regular breast and uh, chicken breasts have gotten and chicken breasts have gotten really big these days. So that tends to be at least like 14, almost 14 ounces, almost a pound of meat. Um, and I typically, after all of this is said and made, I would um, split it into three portions because with protein, you don't actually need all that much. People get used to, um, <laughs> what would you say, uh, eating too much protein? You know, especially if you've gone on a lot of diets, you know, whether it's a low carb diet or a low fat diet, almost all the diets are like, eat protein, it's the best, right? But it's still calories and there's only so much of it that your body actually needs. So I tend to favor um, cooking with less meat uh, than I think is typical of the American household. Um, it makes me feel better you know not only do you not need all of that but uh, protein products tend to be um, how would I put it um, very resource intensive for the environment right um, especially 
uh, cow and pig, beef and pork. Um, you know, I like meat, so I'm not going to cut them out, but the less you consume of it, the little bit less your carbon footprint becomes, right? <laughs> you can hear that our bacon is already starting to sizzle just a little bit. Uh, it was not in that cold pan for very long, or rather that pan wasn't cold for very long, right? <laughs> so I'll go ahead and put this chicken off to the side and discard this one little ugly bit that had a vein in it. And I shall go wash my hands. Now I'm not going to worry about washing my cutting board. Um, because even though you typically don't want to cross-contaminate your, your chicken juices with everything else, um, the only other thing I'm going to cut on here is the garlic. And it's going to be in the high heat, high enough to kill any uh, bacteria that might get on it. But I did want to wash my hands so that I can grab these out and not contaminate the other little buddies in there because this is a lot of garlic. I am a garlic fan, but you don't need quite all of that for this little recipe. So we'll go ahead and stash that into a Tupperware container. You can bring it me, I have quite a few of them, right? And I don't even unbag it. I just cram it right in there. <laughs> and we'll use that probably tomorrow night. I don't remember what I'm cooking. Tacos. I think I'm cooking tacos, but at any rate, we'll use this soon enough that um, I'm not too worried about having an open package. Now, if you're a big garlic fan like me and my guy, about four cloves, will do you just fine. This might actually be a little excessive because they're on the big side. Uh, if you're not a huge garlic fan, I would still suggest putting it in there, but maybe take it down to one or two cloves. Um, just because this adds a lot of richness, you know, the garlic does, to the dish. And we're going to kind of do a bit of a, a rougher uh, chop, you know, it's not going to be very finely minced and the reason we're doing that is the same reason why we have um, thick sliced bacon. There's going to be a lot of heat, a lot of actual physical heat um, going into the dish and if you were to use really finely minced garlic or that stuff that's in a jar, it would burn um, onto your pan and then be bad. <laughs> So we've got fairly large chunks here that I'm, I'm, you know, by most standards, that's a pretty big um, piece of garlic. Uh, however, because it's going to get fried, a lot of that flavor will dissipate into the cooking oil, um, and it won't, it won't be eating like super awkward chunks of garlic. Although it will be obvious that there's garlic in the dish. Now, me and my guy, we like garlic, so that's. That's no problem. Um, but if you have someone that's super picky, um, you know, maybe you use some garlic powder instead. I don't favor garlic powder. It tends to not taste the same and it kind of burns a bit. You know, it's easy to get it overcooked. But, you know, those are options. Like I said, this is a super, super versatile recipe. Um, oh. I did want to make one other note. If you're using like actual fresh, fresh garlic, like this is still fresh, but it was pre-packaged, right? Um, and what I have found is that if you have like, you know, not pre-packaged, just regular old garlic hanging out in your cupboard, it will be stronger um, than the stuff that is in the refrigerator aisle. I don't know if that's always true, but that's been true in my case. So if this was um, like, you know, garlic that I peeled myself, I would probably use a bit less than I am right now. 
but this refrigerator stuff tends to lose some of its flavor, I think. But I have to admit, not having to peel all the garlic has been really nice, especially because most of my recipes, um, at least half of them, utilize um, really chunky garlic like this. Um, and so I can't get away with a garlic press because that kind of squeezes the juices out and makes the, the pieces a bit too small. Okay. I think we're going to take this up like another notch now that the bacon's kind of started. Um, one of the things about stir fries is high heat, right? You're cooking everything really fast, um, typically. The bacon needs a little bit of time to rest, but um, other than that, you want high heat, right? And you want lots of surface area. If I had so much bacon that the whole bottom of this pan was full of bacon, you're using too small of a cooking dish. Um, you know, get a bigger pan, or if you're making like a double batch, which I've done on occasion, um, just use a wok. <laughs> I know, just use it like you automatically have it. Uh, if you're lucky enough to already have a wok, um, they do work great for stir fry. That's what they're kind of meant for right? <laughs> um, but mine is an electric wok. Uh, so, you know, all the cords and everything, it's kind of annoying to clean. So when I'm making a small amount, like I am right now, I just use the pan. But moral of the story, lots of breathing room. You know, I wouldn't crank this up to high, right? But a little bit on the high heat. <laughs> We need to give this another minute or so before we add the chicken, so maybe now is a great time to talk about how you can dress this up. I think I've already mentioned it, but I'll just say it again. The base recipe is actually really tasty on its own. Um, when I'm not cooking for my guy, uh, a lot of times I don't add any extra spices, just a bit of salt. And I think it's delicious because then you can kind of taste everything individually. Uh, but he's a big flavor guy, so we always kind of change it into, you know, one direction or another to keep it from getting boring, right? <laughs> so that's where my big old container of spices come in. And this isn't even all of them. I also have a lot of mixes. These are more universally um, available. I, I think pretty much any grocery store I've ever been into has these kind of like Weber pre-mixes. Um, so can have kind of an Italian uh, flavored uh, stir fry if you so choose. I've also used these guys. These are um, popcorn toppers, and, but they work actually pretty well uh, as spices or as flavor enhancements for other things. Uh, my only suggestion is if you get a, a finely ground seasoning mix, like, you know, it's made for popcorn, uh, wait until the very, very end, like right before you're going to serve it to add this stuff because it's very finely ground, uh, it'll kind of like absorb the oil and then suddenly just start burning. And you don't want that. <laughs> uh, whereas if you have a thicker mix, like here is a Aligo, uh, ag Aglio, Aglio <laughs> Pepperoncino. Uh, this is just another Italian spice mix, but it's kind of got you know, a bit more bulk to it, you know, see how the pieces are kind of big in there. You can add that, anything with like a coarser grind, you can add it about five minutes before you're finished with the dish so that it has time to kind of marinate and, um, you know, absorb some oil and release the flavor back into the dish. And when it's chunkier like that, it'll survive the frying process. A little bit better. And 
think it's bacon is almost there, but I think we still have time to talk about a few other options. Now a real simple way to flavor. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a spice shop, you know, these are kind of like the Weber spices, spices, but a little more fancy, right? We have umami seasoning, which is kind of um, Asian centric, right? Got another Asian seasoning, but what I'm trying to find, there we are, uh, curry powder. You can get curry powder, you know, at fancy stores, at grocery stores. Um, it's a pretty common thing these days. Um, so adding, I would sprinkle it on and just kind of taste as you go because all of these have different potencies to them. Uh, but adding this into your stir fry can really make it like kind of exotic tasting, right? Um, so that's just a few little looks. Um, I also, like I said, I change up the, um, the, the flavorings quite frequently. So there's even more options, but we're kind of ready for the next stage of cooking. So we'll save that for when we're waiting. Um, so I'll bring you in for a closer look. Let's see here, maybe. Forgive me my shoddy um, <laughs> camera work here. Uh, you'll see how the bacon is kind of crisping up right there, right? Um, it's not like 100% cooked. Um, so this would be the point in which we want to add our chicken. And we're not draining the pan. This is a little high on the oil content, but basically we're using the bacon fat as um, the cooking oil instead of, you know, um, vegetable oil or olive oil, right? Now things are getting noisy. Hopefully you'll still be able to hear me. <laughs> and like with most stir fries, um, you're not going to want to leave it alone for too long. You don't have to stir like every second, but we are going to be moving the chicken around um, a lot in the pan. And our goal is for mostly done. We don't actually want to cook the chicken 100% because we're going to add it back into the vegetables to finish cooking at the very end. Um, and if you had already cooked it till it was bone dry at this first step, then it's really going to be kind of chewy and unpleasant, right? <laughs> um, after you finish the rest of the um, uh, cooking process, right? And sometimes I cheat like that one needs more contact. And after about a hmm, minute, maybe three or four minutes, depending on how hot your stove is, um, these are probably about halfway done right now. Uh, so I'm going to actually go ahead and add in that garlic straight into the pan. Nice big chunky, chunky garlic, right? Oh, and that is my favorite, favorite smell. Uh, fried garlic. It's just ah, it's amazing. And now that the garlic's in there, we really want to limit how long we cook it. Like, even those chunky pieces will start to burn if you leave it in for too, too long, but you do have to give it at least a minute for, um, you know, the, the garlic to fry and for all that delicious garlic flavor to absorb into the oil. While we're talking about oil, actually, one of the great things is that we get to recycle the bacon grease here, right? I'm actually um, a big proponent 
of reusing our animal fats. I think these days people consider them dirty or unclean. So they'll, I've known people who will take all the bacon, they'll cook it and they'll drain it. And then they'll add like olive oil later. Now olive oil is delicious. Don't get me wrong. But um, if you already have a cooking oil, why would you throw it out? It's just, it's wasteful. Um, and animal fat has been a cooking oil since the dawn of time. Like that was easier to get than it was to press a bunch of sunflower seeds, right? Or squeeze a bunch of, you know, olives or, you know, it's just a simpler, more readily available fat. And I think people should use it more often. Okay. Some of the garlic is actually more than well cooked. I think doing the video has distracted me a little bit. So we're going to take all of this meat out. This is another, if you were using like a stir fry wok, you could just move the meat off to the upper edges. Um, you'll have to watch a video on how to use a wok, but it's basically like so shallow that you can kind of shove the meat to the side that isn't hot. It works pretty well. But for this, I'm just kind of pushing that in there and you noticed I didn't dump it. It's because I still want that bacon grease to stay in the pan um, so that we can cook our vegetables. But while it's nice and quiet and not cookie noises, let me go ahead and pull out a little bit of this so you can kind of see the level of doneness. <laughs> uh, the garlic is not burnt. There are a few little toasted bits, but not on the burnt side. Burnt garlic. Oh, it's one of the worst things ever. For as tasty as it is unburnt, it is like exponentially worse once it is burnt. Next goes the vegetables. Um, I have not completely thawed these out. They have been sitting um, on the counter while I make the video. Uh, if I were planning this ahead, you know, like if I was gonna make dinner tonight, I might take it out of the freezer and move it into the refrigerator if I thought about it. Um, but you can actually just use it completely frozen. And you can, you can see the ice crystals still on there. Another part of the, the low stress of this particular meal, right? <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just dump this in because the hot, the pan is really hot now. It's going to make quite a bit of noise. Um, so let me just, you know, say upright or outright, outright, um, that per the stir fry name, you want to make sure you stir. <laughs> Because those vegetables were still pretty frozen, they've obviously cooled down the, pa the pan really fast. Um, that won't really hurt this recipe. <laughs> it is so forgiving. Um, but if it's something that bothers you, or if you want to cook faster, you can go ahead and thaw out those vegetables ahead of time. Sometimes I'll microwave them a bit if they're like still so frozen that they're a big old clump. Um, the only thing is when you're thawing out these kinds of vegetables for a stir fry is be gentle because um, you could start cooking them in the microwave and you'll get a kind of a it's, it's not a good texture it's kind of like mushy all right so this will take a little bit for the pan to heat back up um, I probably should have had it just a tiny bit higher that's okay. But now we have some chance to talk about even more ways to flavor this sucker. <laughs> Obviously the simplest way is to use a pre-mixed, right? And if you're going to use a pre-mix, don't add any salt. But if you 
want to customize your flavor, I'd actually recommend adding salt like right now uh, so it has a chance to absorb into the um, vegetables a little bit. Um, however, I know I'm going to flavor this. I'll probably flavor it a couple of ways since I'm making it ahead of time. Um, my guy, he, I asked him if he would be willing to be quiet while I recorded a video so that um, I could still make dinner fresh, you know, for dinner time. Because uh, I don't have the resources to like just make extra food for camera and then make dinner again later. That's, that's too much. Um, so I told him that, you know, either he could be quiet and we'd have fresh, fresh dinner or I'd make it ahead of time in the middle of the day and that would mean that he's having like leftovers for dinner. And oddly, he chose the leftover style. I think uh, the video process kind of makes him nervous because I get really frantic while I'm setting it up and then after I've got it set up, it's in the way. Like, this isn't a giant kitchen, right? But to get the camera and the lights and everything, um, I actually have a card table basically blocking me into the kitchen. <laughs> this was definitely a very watery batch. It's okay, we'll cook out all the water. Gotta remember, this is time to use to show you all the other things you can flavor with. Okay, so if you're like me, you might have a few specialty oils around. Um, this one's lemon flavor. And I might use like the lemon oil with maybe just a touch of like garlic parmesan. That's a really good combination. also have habanero oil. Um, sometimes, even if I've made one flavor, I will actually go through and splash some of this straight onto his rice, because my guy is a flavor fiend, so to speak. Uh, he just he loves spice, but he just loves flavor, like lots and lots of taste, no matter what kind of taste it is probably why I use so much garlic. You can use chili powder. Um, I wouldn't recommend mixing too many things with the chili powder. And then, you know, we've got some regular just chilies. Got some paprika and some red pepper flakes. And the more I think about it, the more I'm gonna add a few of these. Because since this will sit in the refrigerator for an hour or two before I serve it, um, That'll give it plenty of time, actually, for those red pepper flakes to kind of absorb, not really absorb, but give out their flavor. Um, a really fun thing to do is to make like barbecue sauce flavored um, stir fry. Let's see here. So, if I can find it here. Maybe I use it all. I sure hope not. <laughs> I can't seem to find it, but any um, spice mix that says like, you know, rub, like barbecue rub, Memphis style rub, um, you can also put in here as a flavorant, right? Um, we have a mango chipotle uh, rub and that's what I was trying to find. It's a little on the spicy side for me but my guy loves it. Um, so we'll have kind of like barbecue flavor um, stir fry and as I mentioned you know I make this so so often that um, it's it's good to play with all the flavors. <laughs> But finally, last but not least, if you are looking for more of a classically Asian kind of flavor profile, like because it's stir fry, you want it to taste a little bit like Chinese food, I guess. Um, there's actually a pretty easy way to do that. And uh, the more I think about it, the more I think I will 
do the Asian kind of flavor uh, today. Um, but just note that if you wanted to eat it plain, a little bit of salt, it's fantastic. Okay. But for, you know, a bit of, um, I don't know, a more classic stir fry flavor, we're going to go ahead and get about, I'd say maybe a quarter cup of water. And then into that water, you're going to want to put some chicken stock or chicken bouillon. If you use bouillon, it will already have salt in it. Um, so be careful. It's easy to overdo it on the salt when you're making these kind of Asian-y flavors. Oh, do you see that? <laughs> the, my drawer barely, barely uh, has clearance from the card table that all of my cooking implements are... not cooking. Video implements are on, right? <laughs> um, but I managed to get a spoon out and I feel oddly proud of myself. <laughs> oh, I'm such a nerd. Um, so, into your water, we're going to go ahead and put in, I don't know, I guess that would be about maybe half a tablespoon. Probably safe to go for just a teaspoon. You don't need a lot of chicken flavor, just a little bit to help kind of um, kick it into high gear, right? And then we're also going to add, mm, I just splashed it in there, I don't know how much it is, probably like two, three tablespoons of soy sauce. And I got the low sodium one to help prevent me from over salting um, this dish because I will do that <laughs> quite easily, especially because the other ingredient that I want is ginger, and the only form of ginger that I have in the house right now is um, ginger salt, which unfortunately, like I try to not cook with too, too much salt, but um, it is a really good medium for uh, flavors, you know, like I like ginger salt better than I like ginger powder, but if you can only find the powder, it'll work too. And I guess maybe about a teaspoon? Eh, uh, that's my, that might be a little less than a teaspoon. So we got all that together. And we're just going to go ahead and heat it in the microwave at like 10 second bursts, just until that um, bouillon is kind of dissolved into the water. Okay, so it only took me three sets of 10 seconds to get that water warm enough to dissolve our bouillon. And I think I'm gonna just give it a sample here. Oh, that's salty. <laughs> It'll be fine once it's added into the, the um, <laughs> vegetables, but um, it's so easy to do too much salt. I think this will be good though. Um, all of the water has cooked out. Um, and so these vegetables are pretty much done. Um, frozen vegetables don't really require a lot of effort. The only thing I aim for is if there's... Ooh, it's steaming. Um, if there is onion in the mix, you want to cook it long enough that the onion starts to get a little transparent. If it's full-on white pieces of onion, then it's going to come across as, like, raw tasting. So, I'll give that a stir. I'm going to go ahead and add in all of that salty, salty goodness. And we're going to add our meat back in. And really, at this point, 
we're just going to kind of keep an eye on it once the most of the liquid has evaporated back out um, and the chicken is done then so is our stir fry um, if you had chosen not to do the classic Asian flavor um, you would probably wait another not very long, like another 30 seconds of like just the vegetables in there before you added some powders, um, you know, any of the flavor mixes. Um, at that point, a lot of the oil has cooked off. So if everything looks dry and it's kind of sticky, then add in a little bit more oil. Um, you know, these I got at a fancy store, but even Walmart has um, flavored oils like this one which are really good. Um, and you wouldn't want to start with cooking oils like this. You'd only want to put them in your dish at the very end of cooking because the heat and cooking process will, um, whatchamacallit, kind of distort the flavor or make it less impactful. Um, but that's about it. I will go ahead and bring you guys in for a close-up here and probably fog up my glasses or the lens on the camera but we'll do it anyways <laughs> and you can see there's just a little bit of liquid still in there um, that'll cook off pretty quickly and um, you can even leave some of it in there so that it becomes a nice little sauce for your um, uh, rice. Because I typically serve this over rice, even when I'm making one of the crazy flavors. Rice is kind of universally delicious, right? And let's see here. Let's taste it all together. pretty good. Maybe just a little less of the bouillon because the salt is pretty prominent still. And I think I'll just go ahead and balance that out. There's still time. Turn that back on. I'm going to go ahead and just throw in some paprika. Lots and lots of paprika. Oh, so salty. And let's see here, what would cut through that? I wouldn't really add a vinegar um, to this particular flavor of stir fry. That would be funky tasting. Um, but what I can do is maybe just a tiny bit of unsalted butter will help kind of more fat will cut through the saltiness. So I've got big old steaming bowl of rice here. I figured I'd go ahead and eat a little bit of this for lunch and I'll just have it again for dinner. <laughs> um, let's see here. That way I can take a picture of the final product <laughs> and I will go ahead and move to the picture here shortly once I fill up my bowl with an appropriate amount of rice. I've made a considerable mess. <laughs> oh, but it's nice and steamy. And I managed to balance out my flavors a little bit. I apologize that uh, my cooking style tends to be um, so on the fly. Because I would love to just like you know, give you an actual recipe recipe to follow, but I don't tend to follow them myself. <laughs> okay, where is my phone? There it is. So let's go ahead and we'll take a picture of that in all of its messy glory. And I will throw that up onto the screen. Um, normally I do just a couple of shout outs, but uh, because this is sort of my thank you uh, holiday special here, I'm actually going to just 
read off the names of everybody who's kind of commented this month. <laughs> so thank you to Lori Futrell, Vic, Victasia K, Jana, Attilio, Veronica Strom, Wicca Banks, Ern, Kendra Tyson, Sharon May, Sharon Nelson, and Lacey. Thank you guys. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and I will see you in the new year. <laughs> Bye.